Всем привет! Выкладываю пятничный стрим. Вы знаете, что такие стримы я не перевожу, так как в них очень много разговора ни о чем, но по видеоролику можно увидеть геймплей и список динозавров, также много всего интересного. Надеюсь, ты увидел и заметил то, что другие не замечали. Прошу делитесь в комментариях и будем рассуждать о игровом процессе в целом. To a Jurassic World Evolution 2 monthly highlight stream, of course, for October. It's really great to be here with all of you. I'm going to check the chat and see who's hanging out in there in a moment. So a couple of familiar names. I think one was going by Rich was in the chat, so that was really nice to see. Um, and a whole bunch more of you as well from uh, various community spaces. So it's really great to see all of you here. This will be the last monthly highlight stream because, of course, November 9th. I don't know if you've heard. Uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is going to be releasing, so you'll all be able to play the game in it's just over a week and a bit, roughly, about a week and a half, but we'll be getting there. So today we're going to be doing what we do best, we're going to be talking with some of our wonderful developers, we're going to be having a look back at what we've been sharing with you in the last month, and we're going to be playing a little bit of the game. So as you may have seen over on Twitter or on Facebook, we're going to be, or even in Discord actually, we're going to be playing um, a Chaos Theory level, and we're going to be playing it on console, so we can show you a little bit of how that goes. We have got Xbox Series X set up, ready to go, and uh, we'll be playing that later on. So stay patient, enjoy the rest of the show while we talk with some wonderful, wonderful people. So I'm going to see if I can pick some names out of chat, but you're all talking quite fast. So Arda saying yay, you love to see it. Uh, Arthur saying oi, you also love to see it. I'm managing to catch a whole lot of these single word ones, so we're probably going to continue. There's Mr. Mr. Something in there. Wolves. Oh, it's gone. Everyone said hi. Well, we all said hi, so that's great. Instead, what we're going to do then, I can't pick any names out. You're all talking too fast, but I love you for it. We're going to go ahead and introduce our first guest. So you all know him. You all love him. It's uh, the wonderful Jim Stimson. So, Jim. Hi. Welcome to the stream again. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Good. I love these streams. Yep. And I totally just got one of the comments now. Oh, it was about my hoodie. Oh, it was about my wonderful hoodie. I thought it was just a random comment. But it's yeah. pretty fantastic, isn't it? Keep the look. It's pretty great. Just got to say. But yeah, we'll get you one. You'll be fine. Good. You'll be fine. Thanks. Um, so for everyone who hasn't been to the previous stream, could you tell us a little bit about what you do on Jurassic World Evolution 2? Sure. So I'm lead designer on Jurassic World Evolution 2. So it's, it's uh, kind of my job to uh, help facilitate the design team and the other teams in order to make uh, as fun a game as possible. I mean, mission successful. I, I would say so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're enjoying it quite a lot. Absolutely. Um, and so I think what we're going to talk about today is a little bit more about environments and calamities. So yes, that's right. We've, yep. been, we've been sharing about that recently. Uh, you'll be able to see on the forums and on social, we've been talking about the different environments that have been available or will be available for you to play and also the calamities that can come with them. So I reckon let's get one of them queued up on the stream. Yep. There we go. So um, uh, if you have a look down there, you'll yep. be able to see the one that we've got. Uh, sporting a wonderful arena that I'm sure you all are very familiar with and very excited to get your hands on. Yeah. And uh, if we could get to one of them and stick, we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of a chat about it. So, we'll get back to the arena in a little bit. <laughs> should, we, should we talk about this one for a little bit? Or are. this one? Yes. This one's good too. This, this is our uh, tiger environment. Yeah. Uh, so, so, in here, um, the calamity that you're going to face is a snowstorm. So with a snowstorm, you're going to get like obviously get a nice coverage of snow of on the ground. But then with all our calamities, we want to make them feel uh, a little bit different, uh, a little bit unique, especially these new ones that we've added in. So all of our all of our storms and calamities they uh, annoy the guests and the dinosaurs <laughs> to a certain extent. But is aesthetically pleasing calamity with the snow one though. Oh, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, um, when you do have a snowstorm, we we want to throw a few curveballs in there for of the course. player. So uh, like vehicles are going to cut out. Um, there are going to be specific injuries that happen to dinosaurs, like frostbite. 
uh, it can also uh, clear all of your dinosaur scans. So once the storm's over, you've got to send all your rangers out again to go and rescan the dinosaurs. Uh, and uh, it can temporarily uh, clear all your dinosaurs and vehicles from your, from your map as well. So there's a lot so to deal with. There's a, there's a lot going on. When there's yeah. a calamity, it's staying true to the name, being oh, a yes. calamity, even yes. if it's an aesthetically pleasing <laughs> calamity. It wouldn't be Jurassic <laughs> if, it, if it was easy. No. Well, that's true. You've got to, I mean, a little bit of chaos is exactly. kind of what you want to be in there, right? Yep. So I guess we can have a look at another one of our environments and have a little bit more of a discussion about one of those. Like that here. one is, our, is a tropical one, I believe. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, in, uh, in our tropical environments, um, I mean, they're super luscious and gorgeous. Um, we have uh, our hurricane storms, hurricane coming, storms. coming back. Um, they're pretty scary. Uh, like obviously, lots of rain, wind uh, kind of flipping around, all the trees going crazy. Um, they are our most damaging storm that we've got. Uh, dinosaurs get pretty upset uh, in, in these storms, right. obviously, like anyone would. I mean, getting rained whenever on anyone generally. gets caught in the rain, I think generally they get quite upset about it. it uh, exactly, and, and this is a lot of rain. Um, a lot so of rain. It in increases the chance that they're going to break out. But with our, with our comfort system, so if you've got dinosaurs with high comfort, yeah. then you, you lessen the chance of, of them escaping and yeah. wreaking absolute havoc on your, on your park. You want to make sure that they're staying comfortable. You want to make sure you're ready for potential calamities to come your way, of e course. Exactly. You definitely want, want to be ready for that. But again, they are aesthetically pleasing. You know, we've got a really nice kind of like a, a, a wet shader effect that goes on the dinosaurs when it's okay. raining, and they, they look really, really nice. So. I mean, I do like it when, uh, admittedly, everything, if you've seen me on any stream before, I spend a lot of the time just fawning over what our development teams create and going, like, how incredible does that look? Obviously, our uh, calamities and everything in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is no exception at all. So very much, I'm really looking forward to, well, I've seen it, yeah. but for everyone at home <laughs> yeah. to get their hands on it on the 9th, that's going to be pretty incredible. Uh, let's have a look at another one. Well, we'll queue it up. We'll queue it up soon. Slowly. In the meantime, did you know that Jurassic World Evolution 2 is coming out on November 9th? I did know that, yes. Yeah. I'm incredibly excited about it. It's a pretty it. big day for us, I've got to say. It, it is a pretty massive day for <laughs> us, yeah, definitely. So we've got the uh, back, back to the San Diego arena. Yeah, we're um, back to the amphitheater and, and the desert. Showing us and, the desert, yeah. Um, so for, for deserts, we've got sandstorms. Um, and uh, again, we because uh, sandstorms are new to the game, we want to make them feel a, a little bit new, a little bit different from from our storms that we had in Jurassic World Evolution um, uh, in the first game. And um, so, what we've added in here is there's specific diseases that dinosaurs can get, and they can only get those from sandstorms. Okay. And so then you've got to go ahead and, and keep an eye on those. Um, and then we also have temporary power outages that only affect your power stations. So not your in, generators. Yeah, in, in, in the desert, you want to have your backup generators ready Absolutely. to go and, and you all there. So just as a, a little bit of extra context for those of you at home, as you're sorting out your power throughout um, wherever you have to be building your park, you will be able to, of course, use power stations. But if you are going to be having an issue of sandstorms, you're going to want to have those emergency generators dotted around just to make sure that if the power does go, you're not just uh, going to have a lot of escapes, going to have a lot of deterioration, yeah. a lot of dying, a little mm. bit of dying. It, it, if your dinosaurs are already unwell, they're not going to like it. They're not going to like it. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're going to have diseases, and they're not going to like it. Exactly. I mean, it's, re it's relatable. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's have a look at uh, another one, shall we? Got to wait for it to, to get, get going. That's how we do with slideshows here. But uh, we'll, we'll get <laughs> on to the next one soon enough. There we go. Here it is. So, uh, it's our temperate. Yes, uh, temperate. So in temperate, we have uh, heavy rainstorms. So uh, something we're obviously very familiar with here in the UK. And um, <laughs> Rain yeah. in England. <laughs> and lots of it. So, um, so yeah, w w with this, uh, again, they're very intense. They can do a lot of damage to your park. 
uh, it can affect things like your uh, the gate to your uh, to your enclosure. So you know you're going to have to be on it. You're going to have to be ready to either assign your your rangers to go and fix it, or you're going to have to jump in the vehicle yourself and go and do it manually in order to like, lessen the the damage done to your park and uh, and stop you from losing money and obviously stop dinosaurs escaping as well because that's pretty bad. I mean, <laughs> I think one of the key lessons of any anything to do with Jurassic is uh, dinosaurs escaping. It's not good for you. It's pretty bad, yeah. It's pretty bad. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're best gonna, avoided. We're going to categorize that one under avoid <laughs> not good. Yeah. <laughs> so whilst we are going through having a look at these different parts of the environments, I'm, uh, I'm aware that there's some things you can do in terms of customizing your ground textures and adding rocks and the like. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, again, kind of when we were looking at these new environments, we want them to look and feel different. Uh, obviously, the calamities and storms, that, that's part of it. But we also want you to be able to customize things as well. So, so as you say, we've got uh, some rocks that are, are specific to those environments. Um, we've got ground brushes, so you can paint down uh, different textures on the floor. But you always have access to the important ones that you need to keep dinosaurs happy. Uh, and then also you've got uh, ornamental shrubs that are unique yeah. to each environment as well. So you can go and you can decorate and make it feel, feel like your like it's yours. Your park. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you set it up how you want to. It is your park. Exactly. All. It's as simple as that. And it's definitely, um, you've got that wonderful balance of you can do those parts cosmetically if you want to, as well as making sure that you're keeping everything <laughs> and all of your dinosaurs happy, uh, exactly. which is what we like. We like a happy dinosaur. Definitely. <laughs> so I think we've got another, another shot down here. Yeah. So this, this one is uh, Alpine, I believe. Looks like it. Uh, so I love the, the trees. Yes, exactly. It's again like it's so much detail and so much effort has gone into these environments to make them uh, just look just amazing. Uh, and you know we've got a very talented team of artists it's who are able to bring it to life. Ridiculously talented. I think yeah. like if we were to try <laughs> and talk to all of them on stream about all of the individual things they're doing, we'd we'd be here like for an entire week straight. Oh, easy. I mean, I'd love easy. it, but I feel yeah. like for everyone else like <laughs> on the dev team having to cycle through the room uh, they might they might be a little it <laughs> might drag a little bit. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah in, in here you'll get uh you'll get some snowstorms and you'll get some some heavy rain as well so. having some heavy rain is uh i mean i mean i think it's a good thing for an environment but yeah i can see how it can be an issue when you've got your dinosaurs coming up exactly so is there anything um or extra that you would want to share with everyone on the stream, any sort of small hints for dealing with one of the environments, perhaps, where you've got these calamities coming up? So I, I think the best advice I can give is, is always be prepared to jump into your range vehicle and okay. go out and, and manually fix problems. Not just sending them out to not, do not this by themselves. Because you can, you can do things, we well, can do a lot more in one go uh, by yourself. But the other thing is, uh, calamities might knock out your power, they might knock out the response facility where the vehicles are, uh, are housed. So if you're able to uh, just quickly jump in, it, it will make your life a little bit easier, especially when you have like a lot of your fences knocked out. It's, it's just <laughs> easier to, to control them. Dri drive yeah. around and just quickly repair them as you go. It's a pretty Definitely. great hint, to be fair. Um, I'm usually a sucker for being like, Ranger team, go, and just hoping for the best, <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. Sometimes that little bit of a hands-on approach can make all of the difference. Definitely. Um, I know one question that we, we did get a few times from the community mm -hmm. uh, was regarding calamities. So yeah. we've got Jim right here, well, you can just ask. Um, for sandbox mode, mm -hmm. can you control at all the weather effects and the calamities? Yeah, yeah, you can turn them off. There's, there's okay. a lot of stuff in sandbox that you can go in and, and you can turn on and off and you can, Customize it so you can kind of you can play the game how you want to play it. Okay, so, fantastic. So and that is one of them definitely. If you're worried about a sandstorm, worried about a snowstorm, worried about a little bit too much rain on your dinosaurs in sandbox, don't have to worry about it. You can just make that decision for yourselves. Exactly. Which is fantastic, brilliant. Well, I think um, from that point, I'm going to say thank you very much to Jim for joining us today and to no talk problem. through a little bit more of the design and a little bit more about the environments and the calamities. And what we're going to do now 
is we're going to play one of our species field guides, I think for the plesiosaurus, while we swap out a guest mm -hmm. to put a new guest, we'll be right back with you. <laughs> The Plesiosaurus is one of the most iconic prehistoric marine reptiles. Its lengthy neck grants it an extended reach to strike its prey, making the Plesiosaurus a highly effective and lethal aquatic hunter. Welcome back. So, uh, as I mentioned, we've done a very quick little switch. Uh, I've got a new guest sitting on the sofa next to me, and we are now going to talk a little bit about the species field guides that we shared with you this month. And the first one you've just seen was for the Plesiosaurus, and I'm just going to get straight on and introduce my guests because they are one of the greatest of all time, of course. So, very happy to introduce and welcome back to the stream, Amy. Hello. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good, though. Thank you for How would you like your introduction? It's, it's very flattering. Flattering? <laughs> very flattering. I mean, it's very accurate, <laughs> after all. Um, so you're the lead animator, yes. which uh, means that for all of the wonderful things that you see the dinosaurs are doing, uh, that comes down to Amy and Amy's team. So shout out for everybody on the animation team for all the incredible things that we see. Um, but would you like to give a little bit more of a description for what you do on Jurassic World Evolution 2? Yes. Well, I, I help guide the animations, basically. I, lead, I help lead animators into creating the best animations that they can make. The like best. The best. Absolute best. They share their ideas, and we help to guide them to becoming really nice game assets, really. I mean, I think you're underselling it slightly. <laughs> <laughs> we you can bump it. that up. Like, they're incredible. I mean, are, that's yeah. my opinion, at least. Yeah, and it's really good. I know from uh, conversations that we have in multiple places with the community, that they, they agree, there's lots of incredible bits, and we'll talk about one or two of the ones that have been the favorites uh, in a moment. But I think we can start with things like our marine reptiles. So for those of you at home, we do, of course, have a pet Mosasaurus uh, in the streaming studio. I like to call it Mimosa. Mimosa. Uh, Mimosa the Mosasaurus. That's, That's very nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's my Mosa, me Mosa, see? Fits. I like it. We don't go on with the rest of the song, but we start with it at least. Um, I've got a couple of notes about the audio, which we will check before we talk more with you, because otherwise that's going to be a real shame if you're talking and you're not able to be heard too well. Um, but for now, I'll just give a little recap of what we're going to talk about whilst we sort out those microphones. So we're going to be looking at the Plesiosaurus and having a talk about marine reptiles and the animations, and then we're also going to be having a look at the Velociraptor. So I've heard that quite a few of you are a fan of velociraptors. And man, when they stand on top of those fences, it's pretty cool. So we're going to have a look through all that kind of stuff. Um, I think we've done a little bit more on the mics. So we'll flip back. If we could give it a go, say, I'm Amy, I'm amazing. I'm Amy, and I'm almost amazing. I don't but know if I go that far. We're going to go for amazing. <laughs> there we go. Um, and ah. chat, thank you very much. Please do let us know if uh, it continues to be very, very quiet. And we'll continue to make adjustments. I can try and talk louder if it helps. <laughs> talk louder. <laughs> we can go for talking louder. <sighs> <laughs> so, um, Plesiosaurus, let's yes. start there. Um, is there anything specific that you want to start with at all, like talking about maybe the references for uh, animating them? Because it's naturally, it's, it's extinct. Yeah, Plesiosaurus is a quite, she's quite small. And I remember her being a bit of a surprise to everyone. I wanted to think she was going to be Mosasaurus size. And then she appeared and she's this small, almost turtle-like creature. I say small, I mean. I mean, she's small relatively Relatively to small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we looked at a lot of, um, sea, we did look at sea turtles and other mammals and flippers and such for the Plesiosaurus. But we also, we ended up looking at a lot of um, papers about how paleontologists think they swum 
I remember Bjorn coming to me with a big paper about how they would have used their flippers and stuff at one point. And there's even a, there was even a video on YouTube we all observed that had robots swimming like Plesiosaurus and had these really interesting, they have these strange, like every time they've, they've moved their flippers, for instance, it creates a little eddy and then the flipper on the back will pick it up and it helps to add ex extra drive to oh, them. It's, it sounds kind of cute as well, just sort of yeah. creating that uh, energy and picking it up and propelling it further. It's, um, it's pretty fascinating the amount of study that people can do on what these reptiles used to, how they used to behave. Yeah. Uh, as you can imagine, the amount of research papers that you have to go through is huge. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a pretty amazing thing that Beyond did. <laughs> <laughs> and what would you say um, is, has, is or has been one of your favorite things about animating the marine reptiles aside from the research? I. I keep goldfish, so I really love okay. like little aquatic things. I think they're adorable. And I remember when we were first given this Mosasaurus to animate, it was, it was kind of mind-boggling because from the first game, all we had were these massive land dinosaurs that would just walk around with these big tails that would just sort of basically balance the dinosaur and help yeah. to react to basically what it was doing. But the Mosasaurus specifically, it was, it was like the opposite. You had to animate the tail driving the motion. Right. So that was really quite a tricky thing for me, personally. <laughs> I remember the first animation I did was, a, the, I think it was the shark feeder animation. And I remember looking at a lot of sharks. <laughs> a lot of sharks. <laughs> a lot of shark, shark attacks and stuff. Of course, with the film as well. Yeah. We use a lot of the film reference for that particular I mean, a thing. Particularly great reference, not to like spoil the film or anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I think most people here will probably have seen the film by now, so we're, we're good. There's like, the statute of limitations for spoilers is probably gone, I would say. Um, I think another nice thing with the Plesiosaurus is like, the really long neck is just that very different look compared to some of the others. So, like the Mosasaurus, there's a very different approach, I imagine, to getting that to, well, swim <laughs> properly, right? Yeah, 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 because... Um We've got these, um, this lovely mechanic in the game that helps to, to flex our, our reptiles towards the path they're going to, and the day are fine-tuned that, and you have this plesiosaurus just slowly tilting through the water and gliding and leading with the neck and everything. That was an interesting challenge for sure, trying to animate the, with this neck leading the entire motion. It's pretty cool. It is really <laughs> cool. Sorry, I, <laughs> I meant to sit here and queue up a question, but I'm just like, tell me more. <laughs> just, just keep talking. I just want to know everything that's happening. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> of, course, of course, it was fun getting it to be eaten as well. I mean, but they're so cute. They are cute. They're, they're so fun cute. to eat, right? I mean, that's true. Cute <laughs> things, I guess. Like, this one definitely doesn't care. So, yeah, that's fair enough. I think uh, another nice part for the marine reptiles uh, is the, the viewing galleries. So, um, what is your feeling on that? Do you reckon that's something that you would want to get into to be able to see them or to be seen by them? Heck yeah! Who's I being mean, you viewed? Wanna, you wanna, like, if you if you were if it were real and you went into this viewing gallery and you saw this Mosasaurus swim past, you'd be able to get a real amazing sense of scale. It'd be like seeing. Imagine it'd be like seeing a blue whale in the flesh. I mean, that would be. Amazing. I've never seen one in the flesh. No, I've never seen one either. That would be absolutely amazing. I mean, I'd love to. It yeah. would be... I, I get it. I get the appeal of a dinosaur park. I mean, that's a big surprise, but it would be pretty incredible. Uh, and you wouldn't be nervous at all about going a little bit underwater and mm. being in that sort of... The, the seats go Maybe down. Maybe a little, I suppose. I mean, it might be quite intimidating if you get lowered and you see this humongous beastie staring at you with these big eyes just staring right back yeah yeah i mean i guess you can make a little bit of a connection between them mm. yeah get to know the mosasaurus get to know the plesiosaurus oh so, well we've talked about the water we've talked about the the uh, different approaches of animating for something that is swimming rather than on land to so make a massive difference of course um massive but, <laughs> Massive difference, but an incredibly like fun um, opportunity to do that. As oh well. yeah, it was amazing. It was, I was, it was it was daunting to begin with, but now I, f I love animating these aquatics. They're so much fun. Could you animate them so differently? Yeah, I find. Well, I, I like mean, we just talked workflow. about exactly that. Like, there's a difference between the way that they're balanced. There's a difference in the way that the different well reptiles swim through the water between having the neck leading it and being propelled. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of things there that you can consider for animating them. But 
we do have, of course, one of the favorites, which is the Velociraptor. Yeah. So I think we should take a little bit of time to talk about that one. So let's, uh, we can pop that in the background, I think, uh, with the species field guide. There we go. So this has been one of the more iconic, I think, uh, dinosaurs in the game. Everybody knows them. I mean, those teeth, that look, the playfulness. I remember when we released this actually, and people really enjoyed when they're like they fall over and they they miss and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're just busy watching the species field guide again. Yeah. Don't mind us. We'll be <laughs> we'll be fine. Just getting fully immersed again. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's how we do it here. Well, raptors are in basically every film, aren't they? I think. I think they're in every Ooh. film. Yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. I've got a really enthusiastic Jens nodding at me from off camera <laughs> to confirm that yes, every film. Every I mean, film. I was willing to just say yes and be pretty like 95% confident, but we got there. Um, and the Velociraptors again, as despite that of course we have got a lot of experience with animating dinosaurs on land, I think for Jurassic World Evolution 2 we've got a lot of new things in there. We've oh, taken gotcha. a lot of different approaches and we've revisited all of this, so one of those key parts being dynamic hunting. Yes. So would you like to share a bit about that with everyone at home? Uh, what was it like working on that and with the, all the animations? I think as well, just to mention, we did have Andrew Scott on a previous stream, and uh, he's one of the people who was hugely involved in this, so shout out to Scotty uh, for all of the hard work and that, and of course the rest of the team. Uh, but yes, so if you could tell us a bit more about that, that would be yes. amazing. Yeah, with the dynamic pack hunting where they leap up on other dinosaurs. It was so much fun to do. I mean, <laughs> I, I remember back when we started prototyping this system and I was like, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the Parasaurolophus to not die instantly. I'm gonna do it. And it's like yes. it's finally getting it just to buck raptors off. And then when we managed to get them to sync up and do kicks as well. That was that was proper fun. I mean, you get there's a there's a whole bunch of these that happen on various dinosaurs. I mean, your raptors can take some punishment now. Yeah. <laughs> various dinosaurs. They can take some punishment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was that was really fun. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and we talked actually a little bit about where would you find references for the marine reptiles. Um, but what would you, what would you look towards for a velociraptor? For Velociraptors, we use the films primarily. We looked at an awful lot of shots from various films There's and picked out material. all the character moments because they're really characterful characters. Characterful characters. They are characterful characters. Characterful characters. <laughs> yes. Rich characters. That's a better way of putting it. It's all right, I've got you back. <laughs> My brain they is are very characterful working. characters, though. Yeah, they are. Um, so we pick out a lot of those moments where they show off a little bit of that feisty personality and we yeah. try and like, th like thread that through everything that they do in the game. So even though you've got them like play fighting, it's not it's not like like cozy, cuddly, cute play fighting. It's like they're they're kind of going for each other, right? They're going for <laughs> they're it. Not, they're not the friendliest things. This isn't world. your brother and sister play fighting kind yeah. of thing. This is a lot more <laughs> a lot more aggressive. Yeah, and you can expect to see a lot more of that kind of behaviour in all the other things that they would do with one another and with various other unfortunate dinosaurs. Unfortunate, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate dinosaurs. Uh, well, we, of course, have that slightly more aggressive side, and there's, of course, the hunting. But just like all of us, there's a softer side, I think, to the Velociraptors. They, uh, they can get along with each other occasionally. Yeah, they'll get along. <laughs> yeah, kind of, maybe, kind of, kind of get along, yeah. I mean, they do follow one another's commands, and they'll stick together, and they'll back each other up in fights and such, but, well, jump, like, the pack hunting fights yes. and such. That's, yeah, of course. That's like, that's what they do, right? They are a pack. They stick yeah, they together. Are a pack. Um, I imagine there's some things they do in their off time where, you know, they're chilling. They're, yeah. They're not going to be quite the dinosaurs to do maybe yoga or anything like that. But no, there's, no. there's a certain amount of animation that goes into when they're having those social interactions or when they're just simply chilling and yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. If you look at a lot of things like, um, for real world reference, the biggest thing we looked at were cassowaries. I remember cassowaries, cassowaries. getting shared a lot. I love yeah, cassowaries. Giant Australian birds, yeah. massive claws. They're proper terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. I was going to say they're huge and terrifying, but they're also amazing to look at. Yeah, so that's where you get like your sense of weight and power is by looking at these cassowaries. So that was really good. So that helps you with figuring out how you'll translate that to a so a slightly less uh, 
available <laughs> reference material. Yes, uh, indeed. That's incredible. There's um, one part on uh, online the community have been loving with the uh, Velociraptors, which is their potential to escape. Yes. So uh, there has been, of course, being able to see them running and jumping up and going over fences. So naturally, you, if you have an unelectrified fence and you haven't put enough security in place, this can happen. Um, and I imagine that was a very fun one to work on as well and to figure out how that animation was going to work, right? Yeah, yeah, because you have to work out how the fences are. You have to make sure they climb up the fence and they don't clip through the fence. And there's like, you have to climb, like, work on all the different fences that they can climb. And it was, there was a lot to consider when we animated that. <laughs> I think, um, I'm not sure if we've got an image we can show of the, no, nope. then we're all going to nope. continue on. <laughs> um, but yes, having them climbing on the fences has been, uh, has been pretty incredible. And I think that's going to be a really nice challenge for everybody to deal with once, once we get into playing the game as well uh, on November 9th. Yeah. <laughs> so out of everything that you've been working on for Jurassic World Evolution 2, what would you say has been your absolute favorite thing that isn't the goats with the Dimorphodon? Oh my gosh. That is a tough question. <laughs> I, re I really loved doing the social interactions. The new social interactions were amazing. I mean, we've never really had anything like it in the first game. The dinosaurs were always trying to kill each other. <laughs> so it's really nice to be able to animate something where they're not trying to kill each other and where they're maybe getting on or doing an interesting behavior. Like, I think, I think the T-Rex the social interaction was the soft spot for me. That was really fun. The T-Rex one? Yeah. So why was that one a soft spot? I mean, I, I love it from, uh, from seeing it, but... That one, it was, it was the first one I did. Oh, really? It was the first social interaction that I animated. And I remember, I remember being told, don't make them too cute. <laughs> <laughs> don't make them fight each other. But so you've got to find that middle ground. It was, it was a tough balance to find the middle ground. I, I watched loads of, um, loads of videos of dogs play fighting and all that kind of stuff. And I tried to like, like you had to go for this really kind of, kind of like rough housing is what they do. In rough the end. housing. Yeah, kind yeah. of like, like bite each other. And then they just, obviously they're, play, they're playing because they kind of stop and chill halfway through. And they're like, I mean, it's, it's playing after yeah. all. Like you don't have to go through and just like finish the job. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really nice to be able to do that. Because that was, that's, like I said, it's not something we've ever really done. Yeah. And it was really nice to see the community reaction to that. that community was reaction was fantastic to that. Yeah. Like, I think me and Jens were just there sort of fawning over it again and just like melting a little bit, reading all of these different reactions to people, seeing how our different dinosaurs uh, have those social moments together. Um, not just on the T-Rex either. Yeah, there are plenty of them. There's plenty There's of them. plenty of social interactions. Plenty of them yeah. in there. Is there one, maybe to, uh, to finish up, is there one more, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Spilly999 from YouTube saying, come on, Mosasaur, destroy the glass. Our Mosasaur <laughs> behaves, <laughs> and it will not be destroying the glass because it likes us, I think. Just got to address, got to address those comments. Got to nip it in the yeah. bud, right? <laughs> but uh, before we move on to the next part, and everyone's talking about gameplay, I can see in the chat. Um, we will be getting on to the gameplay um, very soon. But so just hold on a little bit longer, and we'll we'll get there. Just patience is a virtue, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so to wrap up on our, our little segment here, um, would there be any one other social interaction that you particularly loved outside of the? Uh, T-Rex. But I did specifically? You can't call the Dimorphodon a no, social interaction. I didn't, I didn't do that one anyway. That was being lovely, lovely so it's like <laughs> interactions with them. No, the, uh, I'm trying to think. I think I, I had great fun animating, I think it was the Myasaura doing a social interaction. I don't think it's been shown yet. Well, in November 9th. Yeah. We'll be getting onto that but kind of stuff. I remember animating that and I had a last it was really fun to animate fantastic cool well thank you very much for joining us for the stream today it's always a pleasure to talk to you um about all of it yes i do just Great. sit here going tell me more tell me more tell me more <laughs> i um, could talk forever about it if i could <laughs> i mean we kind of do just like in general it's like we should we work or should we talk about jurassic world evolution 2 animations and everything else 
because yeah, um, yeah, it's been great. It's just what we like to do around the office when we are here, to be honest. But for now, <laughs> um, we are going to say thank you very much to Amy for joining us. We're going to show you another trailer very quickly while we swap out for our next guest. And then the next part after this trailer, don't go away because we are going to be starting up, I believe, having a look at some gameplay. So we'll be right back. back Jens cut just after I was singing pre-order at the end of the trailer so that was pretty convenient for me I've got to say uh, so welcome back hope you enjoyed the pre-order trailer uh, for those of you who have just joined us uh, my name is Tim I am the community lead working on Jurassic World Evolution 2 and we're currently right in the middle of our monthly highlights stream and this one of course being for October but I have got another guest with me, and we're going to be looking at the gameplay very, very soon on an Xbox Series X, and it will be a level from Chaos Theory. So let's introduce our next guest. We have the one, the only, Adam Woods. Hi, Tim. Hi, Adam. I was wondering how you are going to introduce me after the first two. I was yeah. like, hello, he's gone, he's gone quite strong with the first two. I mean, where, I where did you go with me? You landed it pretty well. Yeah, you've done well. You've done well. Yeah. yeah. So, how are you doing today? I'm doing incredibly well, thanks, Tim. Yeah, it's really good. Um, obviously, I think there's something coming out in oh, yeah. just over a week's time. Yeah. So, a massive bag of emotions currently. Um, Absolutely. 99% excitement, a little bit of anxiety, just because you know, really releasing my there. babies like these is always a, it's always an anxious time. There's but a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so it's quite a, it's quite an exciting time at, uh, at the moment. Fantastic. And for I think a lot of people on the stream probably know you by now. We've had you on a few of these. You've been in the Dev yeah, Diaries. Yeah, yeah. But for those who are new to the stream, would you mind telling the audience at home uh, what? your job is in your Jurassic World Evolution 2 team and a little bit of what that involves. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm an executive producer here at Frontier. Um, I've been here now almost 15 years. This has been my sole game development studio. Um, my job is very high level, is, is basically working with um, the game director, in this case, the, uh, the lovely Rich Newbold, who may or may not be in the chat. Um, and working with him he has the vision of the game and i'm the how are we going to do it how what what does the roadmap look like how do we actually get this incredible thought and idea of a game how do we make it happen? from yeah how do we actually make it happen how do i allow the team to make it happen as well because you know it's not i'm not the one that makes it i get that a lot oh so you make games do you no you i haven't got time to explain it to you really <laughs> um <laughs> So I think, uh, but yeah, basically, it's it's kind of enabling the team, making sure they know how we get from, a, you know, a nothing, a thought, an idea, 
all the way through to where we are now, which is uh, release. Right, I mean, it's also a huge uh, task. You're kind of, as you said, rich as the game director, he has the vision, and then you're yeah, right -hand he, man. Yeah, exactly. Right he's, he's the kind of the, the, the what, and I'm the how, how as such. Absolutely. Yeah, how are we going to do it? Um, and then, you know, sort of day to day, it's working with the production team and the leads and the, 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 everyone else in the team to make sure they can uh, do the things they need to do, you know, as you've seen from uh, the videos and the, the gameplay footage that we've already seen. Um, it's incredible, it's amazing, and it's all down to the expertise and the skills of the team. So I have to make sure they can apply that expertise and skills and, yes. get, and get, their, get their job done, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, so I that's, kind of, that's kind of it. That's, that's just kind I of I drink it. coffee it's, as well. And no, I, mean, I buy donuts. That's normally one of, one of my jobs is buy donuts. Coffee and, and donuts. then I eat them as well. That's what we like here. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of hellos in the chats. Hello, everyone. Um, they say hi to you. And there's also a lot of hellos for Rich in oh. the chat, from the chat. Yeah. So that's always a nice yeah. one, too. Um, so what would you say is the thing that you're, you're most looking forward to people getting their hands on on November 9th? I'm, in terms of kind of like the game modes, I'm really excited about the Chaos Theory stuff, the, the Chaos Theory levels. I think um, everyone's going to have a lot of fun with them. Um, so yeah, that uh, the campaign and the narrative behind the campaign is very interesting. Yes, I'm not going to say too much about that. No, well, we're not I mean, supposed to. You're going to be able to discover um, that in yeah, about a exactly, week. Yeah, exactly. In about a week, I, perhaps I, in November 9th. I don't I know. I can't remember if we've said it. I'm the how, but I, I can't remember my release date. Pretty sure we said November 9th. Yeah, I think yeah, so. We November, 9th. November 9th. November 9th. November 9th. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. November 9th. Um, yeah, and I think tying in with what Amy was talking about before. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated by the social interactions and the, the um, I've, I think I've said it before, but the kind of the, the next level of realism that we've added to these dinosaurs in the fact that they're animals and not, you know, creatures or, or whatever, you know, that, those social interactions and stuff, and particularly that T-Rex one. That, <laughs> that is absolutely my favourite one, because when yeah. you see them line up and you're like, oh, hello, oh, they're going to go. Trouble. And then they just have this lovely little moment. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's quite incredible. So I think Chaos Theory and seeing people just watching their animals in the parks, I think, is going to be the, the, yeah. the two things for me. All of their... I can't believe that's how they behave. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get lost in it. I'm supposed to, you know, I obviously... As part of the development, you play the game in a certain way. You don't play the yes. game of kind of like a, a finished game. But sometimes I, I'll just sit there and go, oh, hang on, I'm not supposed to be looking at the Amargosaurus or uh, Plesiosaurus or whatever. I'm actually supposed to be looking at a thing. Yeah. Uh, but I end up just kind of, you know, moving around it and watching it. Yeah. Watching the dinosaurs. I mean, I can, so, yeah. I can completely relate. Um, and in the office, when yourself mm. or Rich or yeah. many others on the team are, yeah. are working on what they're working on and I'll come down to ask a question because somebody's asked me something hyper-specific <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, all right, I guess I'll walk on some <laughs> stairs for you uh, and we'll go up and down the stairs and we'll find those answers out right now. But I'll get stuck down there yeah. because I'll, and I mean, you know, I'll yeah. sit there on that floor and I'll just be like, that's pretty oh, cool. That. That's really and that's, nice. this is cool. Hey, yeah. hey Dan, can you, can you show me that again? Yeah. And uh, it was Orchin. I, I want to see that part. Like, show me the dinosaurs. That's one of the most exciting things about developing a game is seeing those things coming online as yeah. you go through the weeks and months. Um, see, you see a little check in, and, and it's the thing you've been looking after, and you're like, oh, okay, I'll grab latest, and you update, and then it's there, and you can interact with it. Be it an audio, one of the cinematics, or uh, an animation, or part of the the mechanics coming through, um, uh, the scientists and things. It's uh, yeah, it's lovely seeing it all coming online and then ultimately getting released. November 9th, I hear. Is November 9th? I, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, just you can pre-order it now as well. Right now. Right now. See. I mean, no, not right <laughs> Adam now. Adam knows. Right. Stay, stay with the stream. <laughs> go stay and, with go the and stream. Go do it after. Enjoy your time with us here <laughs> in the community. Then after that. Go pre-order, yeah. or if you've got two monitors, or do two tabs, two monitors or that's two tabs. It, yeah. That's what it's for. Yeah, yeah. It's one is for watching us, one is second for one is for pre-ordering the game. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're going to be playing a bit of Chaos Theory today. We are, yeah. So yeah. we we just touched on that, mm -hmm. uh, but Chaos Theory. If you'd like to give a little bit more of the overview of what is Chaos Theory. Yeah. So what we've done is looked at the five films that are out, Jurassic Park. Uh, one, two, and three, not to give them their actual names because it's 
The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3, then Jurassic World and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And we've tried to look at a what if scenario. So, for example, um, what if Jurassic Park, what if you could actually build Jurassic Park and open it successfully? The film never managed to open <laughs> the park, right. even. It was quite established, but they never actually managed to open the gates to the guests. Uh, Spoilers, I won't, I won't, even though it was 1993, I'm whoa. sure everyone's seen whoa. it. Whoa. But, you know, I won't, I won't <laughs> whoa, give off whoa, too whoa. many more spoilers. Um, so, yeah, so for example, in, in the Jurassic Park one, it's, you know, you're tasked um, with building the park and then being able to successfully actually open yes. it and run it. Um, and that's what we've looked at in the other ones. Uh, I think in the trailer, you see a sneak peek of the uh, San Diego Amphitheatre. That's right. I think which, uh, for those who have been following the other content as well, there was uh, there's a little bit between um, one of our good friends called Jeff and another one of our good friends <laughs> called Jesse. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, just Jeff. Just Jeff. You know, I mean, that's, I that's what we call him these days. Yeah, I call true. you Adam. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I could go around using... We are the same calibre. <laughs> <laughs> You're the same calibre to me. <laughs> so our good friends Jeff and Jesse um, actually did play a bit of one yeah. of those levels. Yeah, I, I had... I watched the, um, the short version and I was <laughs> in tears with laughter at it's certain so points. Good. I thought it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I was um, watching in the background while they were yeah. doing that, yeah. uh, filming that, yeah. and it was just like, yes. <laughs> They're talking about this dream of opening San Diego. It's um, uh, Peter Ludlow, I think the character is. He's working with the board of directors. It's all, you know, trying to open up Jurassic Park in San Diego. No, uh, no spoilers, but it's a spoiler because I'm about to say that in the what if scenario, uh, you do try to build it. So that one might spoil the film for you. It might. Um, I'm just going to check. There's chat saying that we've got some issues, so we'll wait. Might be too loud again. Not being too loud. It's not audio issues. Not loud enough. Well, uh, just maybe whether it's having a little bit of uh, little bit lag of time. Tell you what, uh, while Jens figures this out in the background, yep. looking like we're probably good. So if people would refresh the streams, saying there's a lot of lag. We're just going to continue. Yeah. And Why Jens not just push flail on through? at me if uh, there's anything wrong, and we'll go like that. Awesome happy flailing in the background rather than dramatic flailing. Admittedly, we like a bit of drama, but yeah. uh, I digress. So today... Life finds a way. Life does find a way. Live stream finds a way uh -huh. as well. Uh, well, there it is. There, there, there it is. There he is. There, we call that one a Rich Newbold special. <laughs> That's it. That's yeah. for him. That's so, for you, Rich. Um, <laughs> for today, uh, which, which level are we going to play? Well, Jurassic Park was the very first film I ever saw in the cinema. Yeah. So I think, for me, it makes sense to play the Jurassic Park Chaos Theory. Okay, So fantastic. we're going to jump on in um, and see how far I can get through building Jurassic Park, Amazing. Basically. So um, for those of you who are at home, uh, this is a level we haven't shown anything from ah, just good, yet. So we're loading in here at the settled. very beginning of the level. So uh, Jurassic Park. Um, for anyone who has questions, I'm going to be keeping a little bit closer of an eye on the chat from now on, because uh, naturally we're going to be playing the game. Mm -hmm. Adam and I are going to be chatting about what's going on as well. But if you do have any questions as we go, please let me know. I will try to catch them. There are, I mean, a couple thousand of you talking at the same time, but I'll do my best. So, should we, should we crack on? Yeah, so we are at the start of the level, clearly, as you can see. Yes. Um, John uh, is giving us a briefing. He's he's trying to get us up to speed on, on what he wants us to do. So this is one of the this is in sequence. This is the first kind of uh, chaos theory level, obviously in, in sort of order of the films. Um, and this has got a certain amount of tutorial elements as well. The, the, the main sort of tutorial was within the campaign. So on November 9th. Uh, when you play it, do have so a look at the campaign. Can we just get that date one more time? Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Okay, I didn't think the year, because it might have been next year 2021. As well. 2021. I think, I mean, if we could get in chat, if you could all write November 9th, just so that we know that you've got it. Yeah. That would be amazing. Uh, but we'll continue with the um, game. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, in the campaign, it's kind of a bit more of the full-on tutorial, but we also tried to sort of lead Add the player elements, a little bit into in the case. early parts of the Chaos series as well. So there's quite a bit of talking at the beginning here. We've got a new character for Jurassic World Evolution 2, Lily Halford. She's um, okay. going to be helping you through this as well. A couple of objectives we need to do. First of all, the classic and iconic visitor centre needs to go down, and we also need a science centre ready for our research and uh, all those other good stuff that we can get done. So um, let's put the visitor centre down first. 
We've also got some areas pre um, defined for to go, again to kind of guide, guide the player into a good a yeah, good layout. Yeah, just for the initial yeah. when you're starting up with playing, you can jump straight in. So why not have a little bit of help? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, while that's building, let's get the science center down as well. Uh, a lot of love to everybody watching because uh, I'm just watching my chat reel with November 9th over and over again. Actually, so let's turn it that way. That's fantastic. You definitely got it down. And you know when the game's going to come out and when you can pre-order for. Uh, then, so we've placed down the visitor center and the science center. Yep, they're both under construction. But we've got this little sign here. It's not connected to a path, but every building, well, not we every need building actually. Most buildings need to be connected to the main path network system. Which normally, uh, which will run from your arrival point. So you have to have arrival point, and then all, instead of all paths lead to Rome, all paths lead to arrival centres. All paths lead to the arrival centre. There you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. I bet you never thought you'd be on a stream where that quote got put in. Mm. I shoehorned that in, didn't I? I mean, right. Let's get to the paths. I've done streams of you before. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Right. So. Um, Unlike what we did to Rich on the last one, I don't want people um, marking my park layout on this. Okay. So well, we're not if we can just be nice today. to me, please, um, because also <laughs> I'm not used to pads. I normally play mouse keyboard. I mean, that makes because sense. Of of because of working, because of on, working on the development. Yeah. Um, for those of you asking in the chat, we are playing on an Xbox Series X today. So we've got that set up in the studio here, especially we wanted to show you a little bit of gameplay on uh, one of the consoles, we just kind of flipped a coin, and we've got an Xbox Series X. Um, so hence, that's why you can see the button prompts and why we're playing on uh, a gamepad. Let's, let's connect the other side up as well. We? And for those asking which um, Chaos Theory level we're playing, this is Jurassic Park, set in the incredible tropical uh, environment, as you can see here. Uh, yes, so uh, Ethan Bates saying I need me an Xbox Series X. Uh, uh, I'm assuming it is my console of choice this generation round. All co other consoles are available and are as I mean, good. I mean, I have them all, but I am an Xbox guy. I go for all this of time. Them. I use all of them um, consistently. I would have a PlayStation. Right. Uh, what else we've got to do? I need to research the following building, the hatchery. Let's go where, for a hatchery. Where life found its way. Life did find a way at the hatchery. So we go to the, we <laughs> technically, go to the research that's screen. True. That's true, technically that's true. We look at infrastructure and we have the, uh, no, it's not under there, is it? Uh, hatchery would be over there, no, right? Dinosaur creation, and it's that one there. When I said over there, well. I didn't point. I just no, you didn't. thought no. about it and no. hoped you'd understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're very, just, very clever, well done. We're just, we're that close. Um, and what you're very quickly what you're seeing here as well that's that's it's surrounded by um, that green the green elements of that's because it's a pinned item. Yes. In the tech tree you can pin things and it will tell you um, when you're back in the main uh, area of the game what you need to achieve that so you can kind of um, when you're playing challenge or something like that and you've got a, a long goal in t got long term goal in mind you can pin the thing you want to research and then know sort of what you're working towards. Right, I need to assign my scientists to this research task. Who are we going to pick um, for this? So we need, we can see the skill level we need at the bottom right. Um, I don't know this person's first name, Brazier. It's very weird. My next door neighbours growing up were Braziers, spelt exactly the same. I think this is the probably only two them. times I've ever known that surname in this world, so okay. or in my life. So that's well, freaky. There they are. Colin and Ashley, they are. We can always, uh, right, uh, so check the, we can always check the bio out if you want to check for more information, see if they did grow We've up next to you. got a to build. I can't well, be worried I mean, maybe about people's your neighbors. bios. I don't know. It would be nice to say hi and catch up. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, <laughs> so you can see now, bottom right-hand corner, we've got that pinned um, node. It's, it's counting up the on. research. Yeah. And uh, we've also got the task um, at the top as well, uh, which is counting down. Um, for Fantastic. showing that as well. Uh, just to answer another question I saw in the chat, I didn't catch who asked, um, but Jurassic World Evolution 2 will be available to play on an Xbox One or a PS4 as well, uh, but yeah. we are simply showing you on an Xbox Series X today. All available on November 9th. It is November 9th. The chat's got that one down. Right, okay. They, uh, I had hundreds of messages saying November 9th, so we definitely got that one down. Excuse me. Um, so, we've now unlocked our hatchery. Uh, the UI is flashing at us, telling us it's under the enclosure section. 
and we can see now available our Jurassic Park era um, hatchery. And again, we're giving the player a little, not a suggestion, a, a place, a, an objective to place it within this um, blue zone here. So pop it in there. Then it, of course, attaches itself to the fence so that we have a nice, um, I can't say watertight anymore because we actually have marine reptiles. So yeah. we have a fence tight enclosure. I, um, Again, we need to make sure it's connected to the path. So we'll do that okay. while it's finished in its construction. Where will that path lead to? Rome and or the arrival center, depending okay. on if you're a Roman Good to know. Um, path road builder. I don't know what their names are. I lived, fun fact, I lived on a Roman road in my home village. On a Roman road? Yep. There you go. There you have An it. An old Roman road. There it is. There you go. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. Old Let's talk Roman about the help road. screens for a second. We so can talk about the help screens. At various for a points, we um, show up these help screens again just to give the player a little extra information about what, what we're about to do. So, here we're going to be talking about. Um, synthesizing eggs and then incubating those eggs, the new uh, two-stage process uh, in creating dinosaurs um, and, and reptiles in, in the game. I think one of my favorite parts is that you can do multiple at once when you do the um, synthesis and then the releases. Yes, yeah. yeah, so now we have egg clutches. So you synthesize and then based on various um, variables, you know, how much uh, genome information you've yeah. got, um, any traits that you're going to add to those eggs, you can increase the, the, the viability of eggs and how many they're going to come. Down to species size as well, you know, smaller um, dinos may have uh, bigger clutches because that's, that tends to be what nature does. T-Rex, you probably don't get more, you know, you probably don't <laughs> yes. release 10 of them at once. I mean, then you're not going to have a great time. And of course you can release them through airlift now as well, not just yeah. out into that enclosure. So you can just have one hatchery but loads of enclosures around and just um, transport them, them around to several locations, yeah, exactly. um, which is hugely helpful for being able to manage, actually manage your park. Yeah, it, it helps economy. You know, you're not having to. These aren't cheap; they're very expensive oh, buildings. It, you know, course. so it helps you if you're balancing those uh, those numbers for the the yes. bean counters at the top uh, carefully. Then you may want to be a bit more economical with your money. I've got 20 Always. million, so I'm just you know I'm buying everyone Ferrari. I'm not buying Ferraris. Right. You're not buying We've Ferraris. This size is for building a dinosaur park, a, ads. And no less than a Velociraptor as well. <laughs> that synergy of this. Right, let's get the Raptors oh, going. Um, so let's. Oh no, what I was doing was connected the path, but I did that because I was talking about Rome. Yep. So now let's. So um, we finished talking about Rome, and now we're going hatchery. to look at making uh, Velociraptors. So we've got an okay amount of genome information here. We've got 55%, that's yeah. enough. Um, normally to synthesize. Um, we're going to go with Brazier again just because of that weird thing. I can also add can you more scientists. Just click in the right stick. Yeah. Let's check it. Let's check. Let's check. So uh, Career-minded Arush has been promoted twice since joining the team. Okay. Arush studied at Cambridge, classic, completing a PhD in sedimentary geology. Okay. Arush began working a few months ago having previously been, been a lecturer. Does that sound like your neighbor? No, okay. not at all. It's I think they neighbor, drive then. lorries now. Cool. So well, it's quite different. It, I mean, I don't think they cared about geology. Maybe not, but now we know. No. I mean, I mean, um, I think everybody likes geology. After all, geology rocks. <laughs> hey. Hey. It keeps me very grounded. Yeah. It's down to right. <laughs> um, So play. I can add more than um, certain tasks. This is. Certain, certain tasks have yep. the ability to apply more than one scientist. Yes. And if you add more scientists, overall the time to complete that task will come down. But you also have traits that each scientist can have. For example, here we've got faster incubation, which will give me another bonus. So it's good to try and have a good breadth of scientists on board uh, and employed, and then also make sure that they're um, utilized properly when you're doing the task. So we're going to try and do some incubation here, so I'm going to do that. Let's I've also got it. a faster synthesis. Brazier, uh, Arush can do fast yes. synthesis, so Which is going to uh, add them in. And you can see um, the excess skill is giving me a 41% decrease on time. Um, so this is oh, actually yeah. going to whip through real quick now. Cool. Well, let's do it. Let's get those Velociraptors. Of course, you there. need to balance it. I'm adding more workload to more people, so I need to make sure I've got a staff center so I can look yes. after my staff, give them a rest when needed, maybe train them when I need them as well. So, you know, you've got it's to balance it stuff. and make sure it's okay. 
So we're synthesizing the first, first batch. Ah, oh, but it failed. It failed? It failed. OK, let's try again. OK. <laughs> I guess we'll try again. No. But it's, it, it's expected. This is a part of it. Um, let's try again. What we're you may be devastated. hearing, I think, is that Dr. Wu is now introducing um, research into uh, other, other technologies that you can have. So yeah. um, increasing the uh, success rate of incubation, for example. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll discard those eggs. But now I need to research uh, improved synthesis. So that, that helps the technology in the lab in the hatchery to uh, hopefully do that better. So, so let's do it. Let's head over and get some right research running. We are now looking at. Uh, it's going to be in there, right? Creation. Uh, he said again without pointing or yeah. giving any indication uh, again, of Again, we've already referred. pinned it. So the game, you will be able to pin your own things yeah. that you want to, your own item that you want to see. But we as developers can choose when we want to, to pin things as well. So. Let's uh, assign our scientists here. Um, I think we can give Brazier a little I bit of a so. rest. I think so. We right? can see, yeah, the, the, their bars building up a little bit. They're, they're, we have used a them a couple of times now. There, so, so we'll just um, we'll use another couple of people down here. But I'm also so here I can only add two scientists. So okay. different tasks have different slot sizes. Um, but I'll still apply two just so we get through that speed a little up. bit quicker. Yeah, exactly. We're going to get our Velociraptors out there. We will get. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm confident. It's almost like I know what is coming next in the objectives. Well, I don't want to say that you've done this before, <laughs> um, so I won't. No. <laughs> uh, right, so how far? We're about over, just over halfway through now. Uh, We've already got an enclosure built, as we said before. All the fences are ready to go. We had a question over in YouTube asking, can the Velociraptors climb fences? So, Yes, they can. If. Yep if it uh, isn't powered. So if it's not an electric yep. fence, um, they will, and they're uncomfortable, they'll try to break out. But why would you want them to? You don't want them got to. So that's not, you know, that's, that's, not, not, a, that's nice. not a very well managed park. That means that you've done something wrong in your park management if your dinosaurs feel the need to escape. <laughs> no. So <laughs> another set of help screens there, just going through yep. that synthesis process again. Uh, now we've got the improved uh, and, and a bit more better technology. Let's let's give it another try, shall we? So Velociraptors. Um, I am going to use Brazier. Uh, okay. Just because I I, I want. Uh, I'm not going to do the incubation. We'll save Birdo right for, for the next job after all. For the next section, because he's incubation. We're not doing that for Sage yet. We're doing the synthesis. So we'll go ahead with so the synthesis. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if we do a little bit better this time. I reckon. I reckon we will. Let's mm. watch it. So we've got ten. You can see when you when you select the hatchery again, all, all in real time. You can see how long you've got to wait for the various stages. We're building. We're, we're synthesizing the eggs at this point. Yeah. It now completes. They're now ready for incubation. It was viable this time, so that was good. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. Oh, oh, absolutely. Especially because if that hadn't happened, I would be worrying about why it hadn't happened because it should have yeah. happened. I mean, it did happen. Uh, we have three viable eggs out of a batch of six. Okay. So we tried to um, synthesize six. Unfortunately, only three made um, made the next process. So we go to yep. select the eggs. We can select the three. Perfect. Um, so there's a few We can see we've there. got some traits yeah. building up here as well. Um, again, I, all, all certain um, research tasks and things can open up more traits for, a little for bit the more, various uh, species. Genetic uh, manipulation. So there. let's use Birdo for the bu Birdo for this time because he Birdo can got do the, the job well here. Faster. Have we got another? And I'm going to add O'Neill. Can we add? I was going to say maybe O'Neill has been uh, not been utilised as much. Let's do Childs because right. then we're we're getting it down to a minute of incubation, which you know that's pretty good. Flashlight. We'll go with that. We'll go yeah. with that. Oh, look at this. So we uh, we've got a backup generator here. That's our only source of power in the park. And as you, as I think Jim was saying before, um, you do have to keep an eye on these. So you can yeah. see the Zycons appeared, which means the fuel, because the backup generator is not, it's not, it's you not know, meant it, to be it, what you run your entire no, park. I, I need to keep on yeah. top of it. It's telling me that it's about to run out. So we'll select it. Again, some more help screens just to tell the players about about this um, new mechanic in the game, and we'll resupply it. And Brilliant. I'm going to be bullish, and I'm going to fill it all up. Oh, bold. Yeah. Yeah. Still got 18 cool. mil. We're fine, it's he says. Cool, casual. Scratch record. 
20 minutes in the future, I've run out of money and I'm trying probably to wondering figure out how here. to. <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're about three quarters of the way that through that incubation, I think. Let's have a quick look at it. Yeah, I need 10 seconds to go, so we'll wait for this to open up. And then we'll show you the multiple uh, release. Yep, let's do it. Once. So uh, we're going to have three Velociraptors. Yeah. Fantastic. Yep. What do you reckon? While we're waiting, I guess we could think of names for our new Velociraptors. Um, Jeff. We, Jeff? Jeff? Yeah. Jesse? Jeff. Jesse and Jens. And Jens. There, there we go. go. The three J's. We get three J's. Three That's J's. what we're going to go for here. Um, Jeff, Jesse, and Jens. So we've got our three. We've pack. got Jess, Jesse, Jess. I've, lo I've lost it already. I just said the name. <laughs> Jeff. Jesse, Jeff, Jesse. and Jens. 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 <laughs> Although, Jens. <sighs> Jeff, Jesse, Jens. There you go. There you go. We've got those three ready to come out. Fantastic. Um, as I said before, we, can, we could release it through Airlift. But we don't want to. We're going to release them no. into this enclosure. We'll release them uh, so straight out into the enclosure here. So here they come, the J team, the as J -team. Uh, Commander Keevil has said in YouTube. Oh, I'm going to say that's Jens, who's just like bolted out of the gate. So it's, it's little, just little colour moments like that where they're sort of, you know, look at each look other. To each yeah, other. I, I check I each really, other before they rush quite, off, except for Jens, who something. just ran for it. You can see we've unlocked an achievement as well. <laughs> I hope that wasn't a surprise, but there we go. Yeah, that's right. It's working. There's an achievement. There Absolutely. we go. Very as we mentioned, we grabbed an online. Xbox Series X. Yeah. We popped the game on there, so we're playing this uh, especially for you guys today on the stream. It always fascinates, fascinates me, the claw as well, that middle claw, how mm. extended up it is. It's uh, quite, quite ferocious. But there we go. So that's our, our new um, Raptors. Um, of course, Brilliant. they do have needs. They're building up their um, territory now, so that's the territory they're building up. So I don't they're know searching you, uh, out for the things that they want in this area. Have seen any of our other streams where I say how this is actually one of my favorite additions. Like I love yeah. the territory system, yeah. the way that they do build it out. I, uh, I remember when uh, going through the game with, with yourself and Rich, I was talking about how I wanted to just quickly build out what I thought they would need, where I thought they'd need it, and the dinosaurs, they decided what they want to do. Yeah. They didn't go exactly where I wanted. I had to rebuild, um, but it adds an interesting challenge. It was really, really fun to watch. I'm now, I'm now in, I've got to get these objectives done quickly, because otherwise the raptors will get unhappy and try and break out. <laughs> okay. I don't want that Let to be on my hands in, on live yeah. streams. That's, live why I, I, that's why I suddenly stream. went quiet and was like, right, I've okay. actually got to make sure I'm OK Adam here. Adam is focusing. So I've just no got a response escapes. facility, which will get me my ACU team. Imagine, so my uh, rangers imagine and my if a raptor escaped after you said how it would be that like you're a Yeah, I know. Now you're trying escapes. to put me off. I, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it. Uh, right. So we've got the response team. Um, we need to put down the new ranger post. So yes. this is the object you place within an enclosure, or I mean, you We're could you could put it outside the enclosure if you want to. But for more efficiency, you put it inside because the area you can see highlighted here, yeah. rangers, when you assign it to this post, they will scan any dinosaurs within that range, even if they're in a different enclosure. As long so as that's they can a really get access nice trick it, you can do to yeah, use stay efficient exactly, with yeah. your ranger posts. Is as long as they can access that other enclosure, yeah. they they will do, they will try to do it. So we place that down in the middle. You can see this is telling me that I've got no team assigned to it, and I probably we should can, do something about we that. We can do something about that. And I will. Though. I'm going to open up. Um, I'm not going to direct Ranger control. Ranger team two. Add the task. Highlight that. Assign it. And, uh, and now what they'll go. do. They're going to um, have, uh, have a little check-in on, uh, on they'll the go Velociraptors. Yeah, exactly. Think. They're going to drive in uh, through the gate on the left-hand side. Brilliant. Um, You've got to make sure the raptors happy. are already pretty happy with their enclosure at this point. I, I do need, need to, to give them a live them. Um, yeah. feeder, um, but we'll watch. Before we do that, let's um, watch the the rangers so go in. For those who are just joining and asking, uh, what is it that we're currently playing? Uh, we are, of course, on Jurassic World Evolution Two, but we are playing Chaos Theory, and we're on the Jurassic Park level. So we're currently uh, just a couple of objectives in on the Jurassic Park level. We're gonna keep playing this for a little while while we've got time on stream. 
And uh, just talk while I haven't mucked it up, while I haven't lost control well, of my park. We've still got Velociraptors not in, having in, escaped in just yet, but we'll <laughs> see. There's still time for Jesse, Jeff, and Jens <laughs> to make their way out of the park over the fence. And then Adam that will sounds cry. Like you, it sounds like you're doing a horse race commentary, and that was really good. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, that, was, that was kind of what I was going so for, so I appreciate that. It was really good. Uh, as we were, seeing, we were looking at before, I can select a dinosaur, go to the comfort tab, and have a look at what they need and what yep. problems they've currently got. So there's no access to any water in here. Slight water, water problem. Water is water. Um, life. And there's no prey. So okay. what we can do is from this tab, we can open up the landscaping tools, which also now include the feeders as well. So paleobotany within the uh, tree brush area. Yep. Um, uh, if I go back up to there. So in the nature thing, you have your uh, forests and, and paleo brushes. Then you have water, so let's um, let's drop some water down here. Let's not make it too big. The the territory stays on screen as well, so you can be very efficient and quick with where you place things in your enclosure. You're not guessing, oh, where is the raptor where territory? Where they going to go? You can, can see can what the territory is. They will try is. to seek it out. They can't find it and expand, and perhaps yep. over time their territory will change shape and move to where the water would be in this case. Let's, so let's uh, just a, a note for those water. at home, there were one or two questions uh, again. There's too many to be able to see exactly who asked, uh, but you can speed up time and you can, you can yep. slow back down. You'll be able to see, if you check in the bottom right corner, uh, if we flip the camera off for a moment, you'll be able to see just underneath the objective boxes, you've got your very familiar play and fast forwards uh, icons there and pause. So you use those to be able to speed up time if you need to. If you're waiting for a piece of research, for example, and you don't have anything else that you need to get done in the meantime, you can always just fast forward if you want to. So that's, of course, uh, an option available to you there. So um, I was putting down carnivore feeders and then worrying about why the objective wasn't completed. Because <laughs> I was putting the wrong ways, wrong ways down. The raptors will eat from these feeders, as you yes. can, as aptly demonstrated by Jeff. Them, I mean, we didn't choose which one was um, which, but we'll say Jeff, and there's Jesse has come to join. Yep. Jens, Jens is out in the forest. The oh, no, here, here oh, he comes. Is here he comes. Okay. It's a That's banquet good. for three. A jumbo <laughs> banquet. Jumbo banquet for three. Um, and you see here there's sometimes a bit of contention around feeders as well, so perhaps some of the raptors will have a little uh, little snap at each other. Yeah. And so they can feed from food. that and they'll, that'll stay healthy and, and fine, but they ultimately want to hunt as well. That's why yeah. they desire a, a live bait feeder. So it's that's like why a, somewhere like a, over in the distance, I think, is a little... Uh, bit of an enrichment little George the goat. in a way. George the goat. Yeah. So Shout out to George's. When they want to, they'll, uh, they'll go and you. hunt him. You may be the greatest oh, of Social interaction is going on over there. Oh, oh we just oh, missed we it. we just missed it. Oh, it's okay. We'll get Sorry. it next time. Yeah. Well, November 9th, you'll be able November to experience 9th, yourself. You'll be able to check it out. That's correct. Right. Um, we are, they're happy. We've made sure they're in enclosures. They've got all the things they need in there. But now we need to make sure that the guests, when we finally open the park, can view them as well. So under the attractions section, we have the viewing, viewing gallery. gallery. Um, we've got the, the viewing cone so you can see that. Yes, um, absolutely. Because there's no point in just putting a viewing gallery that doesn't actually encapsulate the, the dinosaurs. I mean, if you put a gallery you're, in front of a wall, um, they're going to see a wall. They're going to see a wall. But and now get, they're going to see some wonderful... Two-star ratings the, on uh, your the trip advisor. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful pack. <laughs> of Velociraptors, of Jeff, Jesse, and Jens, who, according to Adam, have got a pretty good rating on TripAdvisor. So and they will do now because you can see them. Oh, was it like a one star, can't see dinosaurs, yeah. terrible? Yeah. Yeah. And now it's going to be there five stars. I wonder I how see many... Jess and Jeffy and Jens <laughs> roaming, not sharing food. Jesse doesn't share food, after all. How um, many... Yeah, jo Joey, Joey doesn't, doesn't that was share the joke. food. That was, it was that a was reference. really good. Yeah, yeah well done. Thanks. Well done. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Right, so yes, we now have that objectives. Sometimes um, these viewing gallery objectives, you'll see that the bar clicks up incrementally. It's yeah. because it's as sometimes the dinosaurs will move in and out of the view cone. So sometimes I've, I've sometimes found it. Sometimes I'm like, oh, what? I'm waiting for one, and then they'll drift in, and then... And then suddenly oh, they're, oh, right, there they go. Uh, and so there's a ton of messages coming in. I can see one or two friendly faces, like uh, Miriam over in a Twitch chat and uh, Aramis, and they're all just saying, the game looks great, they're really excited to play it. It's, it's, so it's really cool. What the team have achieved is, is, is mind-blowing, it really is. Um, I've been making games for a long time now, but it never, the, 
the magic of how this actually works never it never no. it never falters like i i completely agree i mean it's that's crazy. one of the incredible things when you work with your dev team yeah and you see all of this stuff yeah. come together like it's, it's, i spend a lot of time talking lovely. with all these different people and seeing what they're doing and like sharing any kind of feedback i can find and seeing what we can do together it's fantastic so I'm about to place down one of the new buildings okay. for Jurassic World Evolution 2 that opens up access to one of the new park teams, which is the Paleo Medical Facility building, which opens up the MVU, the Mobile Veterinary Unit. Called so now what you do is with your rangers, you go and find out um, with the with the scan if they're happy and what what's going what's what's wrong if there is anything wrong. Hopefully you're not because you're all brilliant park managers, I'm sure. Nothing will go but wrong. But if there are any ailments or illnesses or injuries, yeah. then this is where the medical facility um, comes into play. This team will then go out and actually perform a, a more detailed scan. Some illnesses and diseases they can treat out in the field. Some of them yeah. will need to be brought back to the building itself for treatment, such as broken bones or you know, kind of major, major injuries. Yeah, uh, that's a case I mean, of tranquilizing. Bones generally, the, is a problem. Yeah, I mean you don't. Yeah. I don't fix that at home. I go to A and E. Do you not? No. Never had a broken bone. Oh, no, never have I. Fact number Hang two on. of Adam today. No, I don't I've, think never, I've, I've never, I've never had, had a broken, broken bone. bone. No. I definitely had the potential, uh, but I managed oh. to avoid it. We've always had potential because we've yeah. probably all ridden bikes at I mean, five years old for the first time. That's true. Um, that's true. Right. Let's connect this to the path. <laughs> it's exclusive. Um. <laughs> Tim and Adam have the potential to break their bones. Potential. They do dangerous because activities. we have bones. We have the potential to break bones. Uh, expedition help screen, so we're talking about uh, the same uh, similar mechanics to Jurassic World Evolution where you can send um, expedition teams out to dig sites across the world once you've researched and found them, yep. bringing um, amber and other fossils back to extract the DNA to then turn into uh, a living, breathing dinosaur or marine or flying reptile. And sometimes you might find a little treasure in there as well which you can sell for some money as well. So we've got our new Paleo Medical Facility with the uh, the rather lovely MVU all dressed up in its Jurassic Park theme. Brilliant. Um, again, I can with the Ranger uh, Ranger team. Sorry, I've still got the path there. Um, when I select the MVU, I can control it myself, or I can just add tasks and, yeah. and let the the team get on with it. So let's build the Expedition Center. That's let's our next it. objective in operations. Um, you'll notice that I'm building all kind of in this area because of the backup generator. I'm trying to save money just in case in the future I need some uh, reserves in case anything goes wrong. I mean, it's always good to have some reserves I'm, just in case something yeah, goes wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Like save it for a escapes. rainy day. Yeah. Because it could be rainy here. Could be rainy here. Yeah. Um, so I'm building within the area that the, yeah. the backup generator can power rather than building far out and then having to place another sure. another generator down. That makes sense. So Use the resources again, that you've my, got. Again, my part placement is probably absolutely destroying some people. Because yeah. I've seen the creation that the community can yes, do. Yes, that they can do is pretty incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm going to give you a solid 5 out of 7 rating. S why 7? Where did the 7 come from? I don't from? have time to go into why. Oh, OK. I want to, though. I like it. But 5 right. out of 7 is good. Like, five uh, if I'm looking at percentages. It's, I mean, it's a perfect score. Yeah. So. We continue. <laughs> I feel like the chat at home, out there, they've lost all my jokes and I've lost this one. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Expedition teams now online. Um, Brilliant. And what we need to do is increase the genome information we have of our Triceratops from 26% up to 50. When we hit 50, we can start trying to synthesize eggs yes. and incubate. So we open up the expedition map and then we have our various dig sites um, around the world. Huh. As fortunate to have it, I have highlighted the one that, that has got some Triceratops um, information there. Perfect. So let's um, assign our staff. You can see we're getting some pretty um, tired staff now, so I, I do need yeah. to be careful of that. I want to look for Just building a staff centre at some point. We could do that in a minute. I think this yeah. is a pretty good job for O'Neill, who is a bit more sprightly, Ooh. perhaps. Ah, yeah. Um, yes, and also O'Neill has faster expeditions. I had noticed. You had noticed. Well yeah. done. Thanks. Well done. Um, <laughs> I'm also going to send out Brazier again, though. OK. Because I want to. Uh, I also want to decrease the time. Let's do it. Let's uh, do it. So Birdo's going as well. We'll send Birdo. We'll there send we O'Neill. 
We'll send the whole crew except yep. for Childs. Yep. And, and there uh, we go. We'll, there's we'll there's the team going. Yep. While that's happening, we know we're going to want some guest buildings. We are. So I'm probably going to. I can see a, a question in one of my pop many a few guest buildings down this main who kind is of avenue. Who is Lily Halford? Lily Halford is a, a new original character that we have um, created for Jurassic World Evolution 2. And she'll appear in various, um, various spaces. Chaos Theory levels, if I remember rightly. Um, kind of acting a little bit like our. Cabot Finch, who also returns. I know he's a, a, a firm Finch is fan favourite, fa and I can see why, because he's got some fantastic jokes. I, I do appreciate the puns. Oh, yeah. Appreciate um, a bit of yeah, so she's uh, a character that will um, guide you through, sort of, you know, talk to you when um, when there are new objectives, new things to think about, and sort of guide, guide the player through. Great. So that one was for, uh, for Nano asking the question. So let's put some let's carry community on. buildings down. You'll see here that I've got the power sign above these ones. Yes. Uh, because I've got no power down here. I'll deal with that in a second. Um, I can also select um, which one to place. So it's kind of like an amenity building, which is either a yeah. restaurant, uh, a, a drink shop, or a gift shop. So we'll put food. I always go for good old standard one of each to begin with. Um, so I'll put another small one next to it because I like that Main Street feel. I'll make that a drinks one. Okay, we could do. I mean, I might have a drink as well. I've got a bit of water left. Well done. I'm making you thirsty <laughs> with the the thought of a macchiato or something. A macchiato. I don't know. I should have just said water because that's what you drank. I mean, it was, I had the water. Um, yeah. Right. So that's my three down there. <laughs> Let's have a look at <laughs> what else we've got. We've got restrooms. We always need to go for a wee, so we'll pop one down. Yeah, on this especially side as after well. you drink too many macchiatos. Yeah, <laughs> that is a coffee, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't made it up. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we could we could go further, but yeah. I'm not going to power them at the moment, just because the generator will be sitting there burning fuel. I'm going to wait sense. until I get a bit closer to wanting to open it. So we'll leave that for a second. We can leave that as is for now. But very quickly, while we're waiting, ah, uh, I think my dig site have come back, haven't they? Yeah. So we'll ignore that. It's going to show you. The customization that's coming in Jurassic World Evolution 2. But yeah. maybe you'll have to play that on November 9th yourself. So we've now got fossils, um, which we can extract the DNA from from our science centre. Uh, here we do the research as well. So that's a button to take us to the research screen, which we saw earlier. But we also have our view fossil screen. So we can see what our team have returned. Now we've got amber here, which obviously will be um, most, what's the word, rich in DNA. And then we have a few fossils as well, which we can um, extract as well. And we've got some uh, treasure found. You oh, know, you'd probably buy a Ferrari. Yeah. Yeah. I'd need a few more uh, of these. Yeah, I'd need a few more of those yeah. for the one I'd want. Um, <laughs> now extraction in Jurassic World Evolution 2, you can extract more than one at one time, if that makes sense. So I can, you can see I've got my extraction slots in the bottom right-hand side. Yes. This amber takes up five slots because it's obviously very big rich in the DNA but I can still add on more so I'm going to I'm going to do the amber yeah. can, but I'm also uh, going to extract bits. um we've got this one, one more slot well. left we can actually add in that uh, and I think those the, minerals yes because the Museum. number top left is telling you which how many slots the uh the thing will take so we'll do that I'll assign the scientists um we've got a faster extraction trait here so clearly I'm going to use uh childs um we can send childs and then I'm going to do O'Neill. I think we need to build that staff centre pretty soon. We'll do, yeah. yeah. So we'll leave that. OK. We'll, we'll get them we'll to do that the job. We'll leave that those two. We can maybe build a staff centre in the meantime. Uh, let's have a look at what the research is for the staff centre. Oh, that's so true. So if I go operations, we can see the staff centre here. It will open up the tech tree where it is, highlighted at the bottom here. Yep, I see it there. Um, I don't have I can research it, so let's do it now. There we go. We'll put Brazier on it again. Uh, and now we've got two research tasks in progress, which you can see um, bottom right-hand corner. There's the yes. two tasks. One is um, got a slightly different icon because that's the extraction, and the other one is the uh, the research icon, okay. which we use. While that's happening, let's do have a quick look at the customization of these amenity buildings. Yeah, let's do. So it. when I select also, one, just lovely comments, Draw Hat Pro saying, uh, well, these added management gameplay elements uh, making them so happy. Brilliant. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, we're, we're, that, I suppose that was also part of the anxiety of, you know, we put 
we listen, we listen to what we want to do, yeah. we listen to what the community um, say, and we hope that it will. Well, we find how you know, can we yeah, like, exactly. take the best of both worlds and like what we think everyone's going to enjoy and what you've said you'd like to see and what's possible to do. And yeah, it's always great when people say, oh, I love that. Exactly. So I can't wait to play that. So as you can just see then, I've, you know, I can cycle through various yeah. kind of big geometry changes of these um, uh, amenity buildings, but I can also change the signage just if I want to change different, you know, have, have a different look. Dinosaur and the ground adoption. decorations. Dinosaur adoption. Yeah, absolutely. It's so cute. Adopt a dinosaur. <laughs> Look at it. It's cute. <clears throat> anyway, um, we can carry on. Let's put the, uh, <laughs> the fossils out. I always like the fossils. Yeah. And not only can I change the geometry, I can also change the um, colours as well. So we have a full, um, uh, we have swatches that you can, you know, if you just want to quickly spruce up your amenity, then you can do that. But you can also have a full, um, full colour palette of all the, all the colours under the, under the rainbow, including yes. the lights as well. Absolutely. So we'll leave that. And I think our two tasks have now completed. Synthesize, incubate, and release would be the next step. That's it. So we go to our... Now, I'm not going to release these into with the Raptors, though. You don't want to? Nope. No? But I'll show off the airlift, because what oh, I right will then. do... I'm going to build another enclosure. I think they could be great friends. I, I think that, that way chaos lies. Oh, okay. And I want to try and keep this stream uh, as much as I've tried to uh, un, un, uh, un, not, what's the word, not unhinge, uh, de derail it. Uh, now, listen to the chat go mad with this enclosure layout. All right. All right. I'm going to use, use one of the existing walls of the other. Um, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm connected. Yeah, you're, so you're good. You're good. You made see. it. You made it. So that's our new enclosure. I'm going to. I always forget to add a gate. Let's not forget to add a gate because we want our rangers in there. Um, I am going to just clear the area of trees for a second because I always, I like to start with like a blank canvas in, in an enclosure, put them in and then build it up around them. Wipe slate clean. Yeah. Start it yeah. how you want. That's what start I. Start it fresh, ready yeah. for your new, what are we on, the triceratops? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do think one of their needs is forest. But so I'll, I'll be well, we can add adding it back, back in. That's okay. But I'm just gonna. I'm just We've gonna got plenty of cash to splash around, yeah. right? I've still that's got 15 mil. 15, a cool 15 that's, mil. That's going down. A that's couple a of lot of macchiatos 20. right there. And lots of macchiatos. A lot of macchiatos. I'm gonna get you a macchiato on the night. Um, right now I've got an enclosure semi ready, at least cool. to contain them. Let's get the. We've got the gate ready as well. We can uh, do that. Oh, airlift. Let's get still. There we go. Right, empty hatchery bay. We now have our Triceratops DNA. Um, we've no got a couple of really, the really on the edge um, staff members here. Um, I'm going to risk it. On the edge. Okay, I'm going to risk it. All right. I'm going to put Brazier in one more time. Here's Adam. One more Adam time into chaos. the fold. Also, Adam. Let's make some chaos. But yeah, <laughs> keep it, on, keep it, keep it steady. Break it all down. Yeah. Um, let's get that staff building down. Staff center. Let's um, do that. See if we can. You're gonna have to it turn it around the other way, right? Maybe. Uh, well, because the part, yeah, I suppose. Makes the part oh, actually, easier. I, put it this I side. mean, you can't build yeah, them a staff yeah. center and then they just can't get in. I mean, if they want that lie down, they're gonna figure out a way to get in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you I imagine just... if all of the things is like we've got this wonderful stuff for you? You turn everyone. up to a hotel. Uh, can I have but a room you have for the got night? to do yep. uh, a Ninja Warrior course to get to your room, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. On, on the building, we did, I didn't talk about this before when I was connecting paths, but uh, a building that does need a path connection, you will see uh, those red lines. That's yes. telling you that's where the connection starts, and it's red because it's not connected. Okay. So then as soon as I do connect it... Um, it's uh, gone. That, yeah, it's gone. There you go. Perfect. Away we go. So that's now building up lovely, and I'm going to get some rest going on once that's finished. There we go. Uh, view scientist. This also opens up the ability to hire more scientists as well, so it increases my pool that I can um, hire and then choose from. Let's get Brazier a rest. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to rest them all. Your old neighbor's disgruntled. Um, I'm going to rest O'Neill too, but I'm going to hire a couple more in right. so that got? I can still carry on with a few things as I need to. Uh, we've got uh, what do we need? Soy what, are we, Smith. what are we looking for here? I tend to look for a, a bit of a spread. 
So, oh, for example, um, Matthew, Matthew Bell at the end here, Janet, she's very good. Okay. She's got a good three, two, and two. Gonna take go for Janet. her on. And we'll take one more. I'm gonna uh, go with. Um, four, five, four. Eric. Eric, where was Eric? Eric's oh, yeah, three Eric. to the left, no, to the yeah. right. I'll take Eric as well. There we go. So now we've got quite a few staff. I do need to make sure I'm not, you know. Splashing the cash too much, but I'm sure we'll be fine. What are you talking about? We've got a cool sure we'll 14 mil left over. We're let's, totally fine. Um, let's extract the rest of the fossils because we had a couple left over. Um, there we are. So let's fill, fill them up. Fill them up. Then we'll just add those two in. That's their first task. I, Welcome uh, to Jurassic Park. I didn't notice that the, crack um, open some rocks the form, chat had a lot of opinions on who we should hire. They were calling out names, but I was too busy looking oh, at who I, we should I, hire. I'm, it's fine. Oh, I'm afraid not. I mean, this is the this is your executive Adam and decision. Tim, Tim show The Adam to, and Tim today. show. Uh, right, we have our eggs ready for incubation now. So we have five viable eggs. So that's, that's quite, that's, uh, that's quite a, good, a good go. So we can we select go eggs. Those. I can quickly select all five if I want Let's to. Let's release them all. Yeah, I can also see at the at this point very quickly if I've got any um, traits. Yeah, maybe yeah. Neg negative traits, things like this. You know, maybe this triceratops is going to come out a bit weak, but I'll I'll take them all. We'll take now them. at this point because I've got four people on rest and two yeah. digging rocks, I can't meet the the, the needs. Uh, of so it's telling me at the bottom that I can't do it at the moment. So we'll come we'll back, come back. Um, in a second once they've finished their resting which you can see all the rest tasks, um, lower right-hand side, the, what is it, five rest tasks? Oh, no, four. Four, shouldn't take too long. Oh, and then of course I press the start button. One thing I said to myself, don't press the start button. Don't press button. it, don't, don't do it. it. Well, if we're waiting on our scientists, we could always speed up time a little bit. Yep. Get through that. If I can remember which one it is, there we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally, totally fine. Uh, uh, yeah, so we, uh, I think you said before, actually, Tim, on that. So we have, we we have the ability to pause the game. Yes. Um, and you can also have it real time, uh, two speed or three speed. So you know certain points in the game where perhaps you've got all your plates just about spun now, and you you you, you can just you can take a little bit spinning. of time. Everyone's going um, all right for a second. You can speed them up. Certain events will um, take the time back to real time, so that you don't kind of get miss them lost and, in yeah. you know if uh, if. A calamity or something happens. There we go. It can a bunch be of rest and, uh, really bad. We're there back we on. Yeah. So let's get these triceratops. Let's do it. Um, oh, I unselected them. Science scientists. <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we want to look for some incubation. So Birdo's our guy for incubation, isn't he? I mean, we could get Janet um, in on this. There's a generalist. Yeah. And then. We got space for anyone. Let's just put Eric in as well because he's new and all he's done so far is dig out the rocks. I want to give him something a bit more something interesting. Something a little bit more. Keep yeah. my staff happy. Okay, let's do it. Um, that's my own role play, by the way. That's not something that actually happens in the game. That's just me enjoying, enjoying. <gasps> oh my life. god, are you enjoying the game? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I love How it. How dare you, Adam? Uh, I grew up on kind of park simulators and things, so yeah, it's uh, it's very nice to be working on this with dinosaurs as well. It's always a Always a lovely mix. Uh, right, what else do we need to do? We could send, no, I don't want to send any more um, things out. Let's just let's get up some time again. Got a little oh, I tell uh, you what, let's get shout out for you from Osric and yeah. the ah. other mods. They're all really happy to see you on stream. And uh, Thank you very much, hi. everyone. It's very nice, very nice to hear you guys uh, are still with us. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks for the shout out. Found Osric, I found out that we worked in the same town yeah. for many years oh, and wow. probably saw each other many times <laughs> really? without ever realising it until, until now through yeah. Frontier and stuff. Yeah, back in, That's so funny. Back in Essex. It's very good. Very interesting. Uh, for right. those of you who are just joining us, we're currently playing Jurassic World Evolution 2 uh, on an Xbox Series X and we're playing some of the Jurassic Park level from Chaos Theory. So that's, uh, that's what we're up to right now. Uh, the rest of the stream, we've talked about different bits and pieces throughout the rest of the October month in the monthly highlights. And right now, 
we are doing a release for the Triceratops in a brand new enclosure. Yes. Um, as I said before, you have two options there. You can release through um, the hatchery into the enclosure that it's attached to. Or if you want to be wild, you don't even have to attach the hatchery now to an enclosure. I suppose you could just have it out in the middle of nowhere and then airlift oh, everything I around. Guess. You could. I don't. Excuse Personally, me, I don't really, I don't, I wouldn't suge suggest it. Sorry, I'm having, I'm having a little yeah, moment, moment there. Okay. Sorry. It's all right, you take um, a moment uh, <laughs> while I remind everybody at home uh, little, get, that Jurassic World Evolution 2 is releasing on November 9th and you'll be able to play it <laughs> on PC, on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One and PS4. You We're playing on Xbox Series X We're playing X on today. an Xbox Series X today. Absolutely. Um, right. My so what I did is I chose to airlift the five triceratops into the enclosure. I'm not going to release them with the raptors. I'm going to keep them apart. So you can see now my big transport helicopters have just um, dropped the first one down over there on the right hand side, and we've got the flares for the other four. One thing I know always, obviously, is that animals need access to water. So there's no water in in, in this enclosure. So I'm going to paint some down just in this corner. Um, I'm also going to set up the ranger post. Got to have a ranger so, post. So that I can assign. So you'll see here, yeah, it's just on the edge actually, so that's, that's fine. Put that in the that's middle. That. We've got right. our gate. Uh, the rangers are over here. I lost them for a second. <laughs> right, let's add number one, because we didn't have, we didn't give him any tasks. On terrain post two. There we go. Now, um, we can also, some of the dinosaurs will come in with an idea of what they need. Some of them won't. Some of them will have um, empty scans. These yep. tries do. So I can already give some. You can see um, they need some uh, ground fiber there and a bit of forest. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh. As if I timed oh. that almost. Oh, oh no. <laughs> come on! It's okay. Just, just click really it away. Helpful. Click it away. Click it away. They're really helpful. No, it's paused in the background, so it's not yeah, too no, bad. Yeah, it's still good. There we go. There we go. Right. So, let's um, open up the. I'm like, don't get the tool tips. Go back to the dinosaurs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's uh, go back to the comfort level, and for... edit. So we are missing some forest. And we're missing ground fiber, which is the new paleobotany brushes. Yes. Which herbivores feed for. So you don't have, um, like in Jurassic World Evolution, you had the planters that you'd play, place down. Now it's actually about looking at some of the prehistoric plants that we've brought back to life, reimagined in our in our way that you can with 65 million plus year old plants. Sure. And you use them to uh, feed your herbivores. So. When you go to the landscaping mode through the dinosaur, you, you'll actually also get um, uh, those little icons telling you what things the dinosaur needs. So you can yep. very quickly at a glance see that uh, it needs some forest here and some ground fiber. That's why those blue icons are there. Go I think on. Uh, I've noticed something else that we might need. Yeah. It's a bit of power for our fences. Oh! Could use a little bit of power. Look at that. My Somebody power is out. An, uh, oh, boy. The, the oh, boy. I really hope those raptors are still happy. Oh, we've lost a lot of power. Oh, right. We need to just uh, refuel. There we go. Ooh. So, uh, well done, shout chat. out to Hyper. Well for done, that well one. done, well, well done. done. You, you just, I could have been in real hot water there. Could have been. I would have just got gone, you. oh, I'm sorry, technical difficulties. If I was, uh, um, ended. If I was feeling more chaotic, I could have just you not told, not told you. me. <laughs> yeah. Right, let's paint down some forest. We can see the forest need being met in real time as well. So I could just, uh, there Perfect. we go. Perfect. And then ground we also fiber. ground fiber. The different plants will give off different amounts of ground fiber, if that makes sense, in terms of the, the richness of the fiber of this plant is quite high because of those three arrows. If I look here at the calam calamity, cal that calamites. one. Calamites. Calamites, there we go. I kept saying calamities. Calamities. Uh, it gives lots mind. of tall fiber, but it doesn't give as much ground fiber as the fibrous ground cover. Yes. So let's paint some of these down. And then we make sure they're nice and happy. There we go. 
19, oh, no, 100% perfect. Always go for the best. Always, only the best for our Triceratops. So that's our group of five Triceratops, very happy now. So next up, we would continue to build up species. We're looking at building yeah. um, a part tour and also making sure that the part tour um, goes through enclosures and um, dinosaurs are visible from it. That's what we need to, to, to do. Well, keeping on time, yep. uh, it's, it's quarter to five, so we can, we can crack um, on for a bit. But, uh, well, maybe this is a good point to actually end it because what I would be doing, I'm, I don't want to show you the part two, I don't want to give off too much before, mm. part, before November 9th. November 9th uh, but what I would be okay. doing is sending uh, dig sites out okay. uh, like we did, uh, maybe researching different dig sites so that I can get different species in as well. Yeah. Um, building that part tour, which uh, you will all have great fun with on some date I can't remember in the near future. Uh, and building. I, uh, I'm pretty sure, Adam, that one's November 9th. That's it, November 9th. That's the 9th. one, November 9th. Yep. Um, and making sure that the part tour goes through the enclosures yes. uh, to make sure everyone's uh, visible. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, I think then, in that case, we'll, uh, we'll stop there with I think so. uh, going through Jurassic Park level because naturally, we want all of you to be able to enjoy playing through this as well at home. So we won't go through the entire level today, uh, but we will go through, naturally, quite a bit of it. So. I think to finish off, Adam, are there any final notes that you would have for the community watching today? Any final tips and tricks? <laughs> anything that you'd like to say to them before we head towards in about a week and a half on November 9th, <laughs> launching Jurassic World Evolution 2? I want to say um, a big thank you to everyone that has come and, and watched today. Thank you very much for, for joining and, and watching me um, hopefully not stumble through playing it too much. It's very stressful trying to play it while you're on stream. I think I've done all right. Thank you so much for the support since Jurassic World Evolution all the way through to now. Um, I'm really excited about you getting your hands on this next evolution in the series. Um, and um, I suppose the tip is, if you fancy it, go and pre-order it now. You can. It's I didn't even ask him to say that. It just, just says it. It's brilliant. <laughs> Uh, well, in that case, uh, we will say thank you very much for everybody for joining today. I hope you enjoyed getting to hear a little bit more from our wonderful guests. We had Jim on the stream and we had Amy on the stream as well. And of course, the wonderful Adam Woods, who is still sitting right next to me here. Hello. Uh, as we have mentioned once or twice, Jurassic World Evolution 2 is going to be releasing on November 9th. You'll be able to pick it up on PC, on Xbox Series X, which is what we were playing on today on a PS5, PS4, or an Xbox One as well. So thank you as well for all the mods who are in the chat. And a shout out to everybody who is super excited and has already pre-ordered. Thank you very much. We really, really appreciate it. And um, naturally, we've got to say thank you very much to Jens and a different Adam who are in the room and have been helping us run the stream and helping make sure that everything goes according to plan. And naturally, a quick shout out to Clank. So, uh, with that, we will see you all next time, and thank you very much for joining.